Hi friends, welcome to Aishu's DIY. Today we will design a necklace using this beautiful heart pendant. It's a glass pendant and it's rather heavy. So whatever uh, necklace we are aiming to, either we can do a cord necklace first. That's what I thought I will do it. But you can also use the beads to do it. The beads that I pulled out from the box, we have so many big, big strands in the box. I know it's like I just messed it up a little bit. But I feel that these two colors um, go well with my necklace. And if I want, I might include this peach um, matte finish uh, strand. But for now, what I'm thinking is I will just stick to these two. If I need more color, then I will pull out the strands from the back. So I will keep this in the standby. Okay. And also we have these petal beads, which I thought I will use it at first because it has that golden wash to it, which will match our pendant. But then I thought it's going to be a heavy, this is a heavy pendant, right? So if it is going to be a necklace that can hold this, um, these petals, these are very dainty and acrylic. So I just wanted to use this in some other project. So the ones that I want to use is these two colors okay this is more of a uh, opalite clear I would say and then this is more towards that it has a golden thing to it so I thought it will match our um, pendant very well so that's what I'm gonna do you either use a stringing material but if you see these if I plan to use these beads these beads don't accommodate everything so the only thing that would go might be is my 0.8 millimeter Chinese knotting cord, which is this color right here, which I have in my stash. Um, so this color will go well. Let me just try and see if it really goes through this bead or not. I will go ahead and cut these beads. And take a lighter okay, this one almost done just be careful with the lighter okay make a needle kind and try almost there it is going through that it means let's go to this let's see see this one accommodates this 0.8 millimeter chinese knotting cord which i'm really grateful to because i want a substantial kind of uh, you know you can use a beader uh, beading chain um that will also work i don't know if it will go through this or you can use um um, you can use a um, regular beading, bead stringing wire, the 7th strand, 49th strand, 19th strand, anything you have available in your stash, you can use those. Or you can stick to Chinese knotting cord and knotting techniques and the going with all of these things. I'm still not um, very, very sure about these beads, but I want to try. There we go. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to string all of these beads and come back. You can also use um, spacer beads if you want to from, my sta from your stash. And I can also use if you want to use chain. And then, you know, um, this is a bright gold, right? It will, it will perfectly match with this roller chain. And you can use it. And you can just uh, string through it because the bale is already done for you here, right? You can string through this. You can add this toggle clasp at the end. You can have this chain like this and then, you know, add the clasp and call it today. That will be beautiful as well. 
but i just wanted to create something with the means that's that's my go to i really like working with cords a lot and knotting techniques is my favorite so i'm going to string these beads and come back and show you guys a pattern which i really like you can also play with the patterns because we have two different kind of beads one is round bead one is you know like a oval kind of a bead with you know the golden rim to it and it's transparent olive color very pretty very 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 pretty color that will soften this gold bright gold pale is what i'm thinking so i'll come back so i threaded a pattern which i really like which is um the clear one the gold uh, the olive uh, green with the gold surrounding what do you call framed ones okay the oval bead and then the clear one and then i added a metallic um spacer bead these are the ones i believe these are 2 mm or 3 mm i'm not so sure i think around 3 mm i would say i really like the gold effect on it because um since we have a bright gold i thought this gold element will look nice i tried adding this three beads separately as you guys can see it doesn't have any and it looks more to pink towards uh, pink for me so when i add this gold it kind of puts its reflection on the clear beads as well with this darker color cord it helped so i just strung a bunch so it's about almost like uh, say 10 inches like 9 9 and 3/4 inches on one side and slightly more on the other side and i want to do a double strand is what i'm thinking at this point um i'm going to leave about say an 8 inch tail 8 to 10 inch tail i would leave and then i will continue uh doing the knots so 8 inch tails what if i think i would need then i would do that and go ahead and knot it here at the 8 inch mark so that i am about say right when i say 8 inch yes this is about 8 inch for me so i added the knot right there and i'm going to add knots after um it depends like how you would like your knots to be i still have it on the spool i didn't even cut because we whenever we knot we do that right so we don't cut the cord you string all the beads and then start knotting so i just pull all the beads down see i have inserted the pendant as well i just um threaded it in under this elongated bead which seemed to be right so i did that and then here you go just want to push the beads down down the cord so that i have enough to uh, make an overhand knot see wrap it around your two fingers take the edge of your cord put it through the um between between your two fingers and then you have a knot so hold it between index finger like this pinch the knot and pull so here we go i am not aiming a very tight knot okay still have a little bit of play left you might not be it might not be very visible but i still have that left which i really want because i want this necklace to be very subtle and not you know a stiff or so so that's how i'm going to knot here i'm going to knot between the elongated beads between the elongated beads and the round ones that's all i'm going to knot but you can knot every other bead or so if you want to but i'm choosing it this way Okay, and as I said, I'm not doing these knots very tight enough. And this is a hand knotting technique. I have been through this technique several times in my um, channel, but um, I'll go through once more. It's just a regular knot, and then you just shift your hands, and you pinch it, and you pull. Okay, so see this. This is how my knots are. and then i pull the beads down so I wrap this around two fingers take this end part and put it through in between those two fingers and take it down and then you have a knot 
at this point if you, ha you have a knot. So if you hold your index finger through the knot and tighten this, so before it comes like uh, towards tightening it up, if you do it this way and then pull it, then it is very, very precise. So that's one way. If you have your tweezers, nose pliers or tweezers, or you know a bead all, you can make a knot just like that. Put your tweezers inside the knot and then hold where you want the knot to be in the cord. Okay, and then just pull this ends. Okay, if you take it, it's still loose. Take your pliers and or tweezers and push the knot down to the bead. That is also another way to knot. As I said, I didn't want this knot to be very tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the beads down. Again, do the same thing. And if you have a bead all, what you will do is make that knot, put it down on your mat. Take your bead all. This is a bead all, right? Regular ones. Then hold it in, put it in through this loop of your knot and then hold it against the bead that you want the knot to sit right next to. When you come closer, you will take the bead all out and push the knot towards the bead with your fingers. That's all. So I will continue knotting and, and let you know when I come to the middle how I want to do it for the pendant and then continue. Hi friends, I finished stringing these things, knotting it and here we go. This is how it has turned out to be. It is very pretty. But I wanted to do one more strand as I said before itself. But I don't want to add it to this pendant. I would rather do it as an independent uh, like a choker type of a necklace and then add it to this uh, necklace. You know if you want you can layer it that way. You don't have to be like um, I had a customer who went through my um, uh, um, designs and she was like this m pr this pattern is very pretty it was a double strand necklace which was knotted and you know attached together and she was like oh if only it would have been you know separated it would have been really nice I would have taken it at that point of time because the two strand was a little bit too much for me uh, to wear on a daily basis that's what she said so that uh, I thought I would take that into consideration so in case if you want to layer it, layer it you have a chance to layer it or if you want to wear it um, the necklaces in two different occasions you get a chance to wear it why not utilize that right that's uh, that kind of you know um, really sets tone for this necklace so this is here and I have left out some and cut the cord uh, exactly about say eight and a half inches is what I have on each uh, side available that is for our sliding knot and for the extension if you want the beads to be if you want the necklace to be long enough or not so I have some beads left out like it's not a lot but I have some so this is how much I have left from the pattern and I'm I want to utilize this petal beads for the choker type of a necklace so that we can have a nice you know um, choker matching to this Mm, I have started threading it through the same Chinese knotting cord which is pointed to middle but you don't have to use the Chinese knotting cord you can use, uh, use a bead stringing wire and do it that way also that's not an issue but I just want to continue with that so this is the pattern I'm going to go for so uh, I mean the same two beads instead of putting the spacer beads in the middle which we did it in this outer uh, layer of necklace um, I try to put a seed bead this is 12 seed beads this is regular seed beads this is not even branded it's bead treasures it's a Hobby Lobby brand and I get a big uh, long um, tube of those so I use that and then I, I, I did use some jump rings this is my jump ring. This is gold jump ring. And um, I think this is, let me see, it's about say 10 millimeter jump ring is what I feel. You can do a smaller jump ring, but I want this to move like this. Can you see that? It moves like freely like that. That's what I want it to do. So I just want to 
you know you can do the smaller but since i have the ones that i um the bigger ones that i'm using it so the thing is i i added a seed bead i added the spacer bead and i looked at it i think this seed bead looks prettier because the spacer bead has a big enough hole and all you look at is the hole from the uh, from uh, from the front so i thought i will use this okay let me show you guys what i did take the jump ring use the two sets of pliers bent nose pliers and twist nose pliers open up the jump ring prep the jump ring first so go back and forth until it meets each other and nicely sits you know like that once you have that then open it up add the petal bead some from behind and then take a seed bead and then add it add it to the jump ring it will go through see this and then what you do is close it make sure it's completely closed that's important and then nothing much different add your transparent bead and your leaf um, jump ring and then add another bead continue with the elongated olive bead since it's going to be a choker it's not going to be a long one so i'm just trying to utilize all these beads and uh, let me see how far it gets right i'll come back and show you guys what i got this is all the beads that i have left so i have strung all of them except i need to change this to a seed bead that's one thing that i need to do but other than that everything is done and also i have saved four for eight of these beads and just i'm going to save these uh two of these beads um for earrings that i'm gonna do but i'm gonna start nodding from here i know this is a very very um uh, short uh, length which is about say 10 and a half inch so i'm gonna add knots that will give us a little bit more but i can keep the back you know that way it's fine i can do that so what i'm gonna do here is um i'm just gonna measure this around my neck and it's about say this much so okay i'm gonna leave about so three inches i need for the extension three to six and then one for the adjusting knot and i'm gonna leave seven inches of tail and then i'm gonna tie an overhand knot just like that and then i'm gonna measure seven inch and make sure my knot is you know after the knot i have seven inches of cord and then what i'm gonna do is push a bead knot okay you can increase the length of the necklace by adding more knots but since we didn't do that that much in the uh, outer circle i don't want to do as many knots but i still will do a couple of knots to actually reinforce um that you know because this cord also creates a color in this type of necklace so we have to actually take into consideration that as well the color depends right and this is not a normal color it's like a it's called golden color chinese knotting cord but as, as, as you guys can see it has that mustardy gold kind of a dark mustardy gold kind of a look not really gold gold i would say but this is a perfect color you know the bright gold will not look good in a chinese knotting cord so i just add these two beads i just push those down and then add one more knot and as i said i am not gonna knot tighter because i want this necklace to be flexible so i'm just gonna knot and push that knot right next to the bead okay just like that because i want this to move and also i want the necklace to be flexible so that's what i'm doing 
push that bead down and then again tie in again another knot I want this to move freely making sure it moves freely and then push the bead and this is a hand knotting technique we have already seen in this video and several videos before as well so I'm just gonna fastly do that and then we can quickly go for the closure of this one and the choker and also the um, long necklace as well it's a sliding knot or just a both sliding knot um, but we are doing it separately so that if we want to lay the necklace we can or else we can wear the necklace separately as well right whichever mode you have that day you can do that there we go excuse the violent noise that's my daughter practicing and I just I came upstairs and closed the door none of them helps violin sound is a little bit strong she's a fifth grader and she is in the band Then push these. Once you learn the hand knotting technique, it becomes a second nature for you. You can actually string your beads whenever you get time and keep it. And just tie one knot after all the beads and then you can take it with you. The knot, uh, uh, the project that needs to be knotted wherever you want to. Go wait in a restaurant or you know in the flight or even when you're watching TV. You can just continue knotting it. That way it will be much more, you know, uh, it will feel that it is less time consuming and also more flexible. Okay. So. I wanted to use these petals. So I think I have used it to my, you know, best ability is what I would think I have still some petals left except for the six millimeter transparent opalite kind of a bead and the elongated bead is also almost done if you use it for the earrings then you hardly have one left so We got a chandelier component for the earring. I'm planning to use that. But if you want to do a simple earring, you can just do with just two beads and a spacer bead in between. Oops, I did something wrong. That's what I feel. Okay. Instead of adding these ones, I just put the rest inside the loop push the bead almost there
so i have my naughty do it all for doing the sliding knot i'm thinking of this long pendant um the outer uh, strand of the necklace i want to make it like this so i took the two strands and i was i actually secured it here in my naughty do it all as you guys can see and then uh, take a eight inch piece of uh, chinese knotting cord and start my um, square knot so you can just do a regular overhand knot first and then do it do the square knots is up to you so now the square knots is basic macrame knots that um, you can find in the description be uh, box below a link for the video that i explain all the basic knots of macrame it's a very simple technique but it is a very versatile design that you can use it for different uh, projects and it is um, um, a very good chance it gives for your necklace and your bracelet to be adjustable so that you don't have to know the size of the person that you are making the jewelry for it can be unanimously one uh, pattern so so one um, size fits for all kind of like it's often said that if it is adjustable then it fits right so that's how it is so it's a very versatile um, technique that you might want to have it in your arsenal so here it is the square knots it consists of cues and p's so this is as you guys can see i take my left cord keep it on top of the center cord it forms a p so that is p go take the left cord and go on top of the right underneath and through this p so that's what you make your p with and then the q this is like a q so you take your left cord keep it on top of the center cord take the right cord underneath everything and through the slope as you guys can see this is how we make the knots and then you can uh, slide your cords underneath that's how it becomes adjustable so this is what i'm going to do so this one i have kept the cords in a parallel fashion then i will do it in a crisscross pass uh, fashion for the inner strand is what i was thinking so this is like basic three knots is enough but if you have a little bit more that's good too so now you snip off this cord just leaving a little bit on the sides just like that then take your lighter you can use a thread burner if you want to but i started uh, working with macrame a lot and then i figured this is you know easy for me to do it so we are done with this okay let me put that aside for now and then what i would do is i would take the inner strand i have cut again another piece uh, like with an uh, eight inch piece so take these two throw it in the trash this is my this is my inner strand so this one i crisscross see this the cords just like that right so secure it and secure this as well now take the eight inch piece do the same i start with a q you can start with a p or q whichever you're comfortable with but stick to one side so that you will like that's becomes easier right so that's a good one so that's a that's a p and a q so i'm doing the same knot but this time i have crept the um, cords crisscross rather than you know parallel to each other so you will not have two two um, sliding knots in the back of your neck that's why i wanted to do it this way so one will be flat one will be perpendicular to that so that it is no it's like a, it feels like one um hell of a harmony between the knots moreover i don't want the knots to overlap on the back of your neck so that's also an intention so here we go couple more knots 
so if you don't you like if you use cord there is a variety of ways to finish it with knots just not using any clasp of choice some people are allergic for clasps like for particular metal kind of you know stainless steel is very safe predominantly that's the one which is the safest but uh, some people are even allergic to silver and gold the real silver and gold some people are allergic to this alloy um, but you should always uh, find some findings which is lead free and nickel free that's what they they call it so that then and the thing is um and also you never know like even though if they claim that it is all that you never know what's there in the material because they they the middleman must be selling it to you guys you never know who the manufacturer is and how truthful he is to using particular kind of materials even though it's much regulated in us you never know it's safe to be sorry in that case if you are choosing to use cord for jewelry making then you don't have to use all those findings you can just use the cord and uh, do this knotting technique that way you will have a necklace with metal free elements in it and it's a um, very very safer way for people who have allergies so here we go so see this the cord is on either side right it's so i have kept it um like that and then did this wherein in this necklace what i did was i just did it like that so when i wear what i mean by this is how the necklace will look in the back so you will not have to two otherwise you will have two two cords on top so that's what i meant by it so here we go we have the ends and if i use the bees then i won't be able to have it you know mm, for um for you to use a completely different so what i was thinking about for the earrings is let me see where did i keep it yeah this was the earrings that I was thinking I would do. I mean, you can use this too. It has the heart which will, you know, kind of... Um, or we can use this is what I thought. But then I feel this is more... No, not really. This is more kind of like all the different metals i don't know if the camera is picking it up or not the metal colors are very different so it's very hard to you know match the jewelry with so we need something in the end to actually pull it but you can also make you know um a loopy loop kind of a thing instead of a bead to actually push and pull the necklace you can use that as well so let me just try so now I'm gonna teach you guys how to make this panel knot with this knot you can actually you know um, pull and you know you don't have to have a bead at the end you can actually add a bead and then put a regular overhand knot and then melt the ends and that way you can pull the necklace together but you can also do this this also looks very pretty so what I want to do here is there is two strands right you're gonna make an end for the two strands so what I did was I just had a little bit of a distance and then like about say three inches because you want the necklace to move um so that's that and then you hold like this is a, these are the pegs okay this is just a rod so i keep this rod here and i have this yarn needle that you can use so take your uh, cord okay hold the needle on top like right i'm sorry i'm not even in the a frame let me just zoom out a little bit so i have this rod in the third uh fourth um 
hole and then I have the needle above. See how I wrap it? So wrap, wrap, wrap. Don't worry, I will do this three more times. You will get to see um, this map close. So I just need to make this a little bit smaller because I needed more wraps. See this? I just wrap it around this needle once, twice, thrice. Just did five times. Four. And if I can do five, that would be really cutting it close. Let me just leave a little bit here. So we need sufficient cord. See this how it goes underneath and over. Two, three, and four. I wrap the needle and the cord at the same time. So you guys can see five. When I do the five wraps, take this end cord and put it through this needle loop the loop in the needle, thread the needle with the cord just like that. It's a little bit uh, difficult to do with a shorter cord. Um, so I have it now. Now what I do is I gently pull this needle through that loop. See how I have this? Now you can take this off and just guide this barrel knot so that it's not, you know, the wraps are not overlapping. Okay, and just pull it tight. There we have our knot. Okay, so let's do this with the other ones too. So I have the knots. Now I can, you know, I, I just can, you melt it, melt the ends and then call it a day and leave this hanging because I like it. It looks good. You can just melt the end and you know that way it won't fray or anything like that. So that's okay if you guys like the look of it. So let me just show you guys how this works. See this, this necklace can be moved up till here. And because of this knot, then uh, the cord will not move anymore. So this is how much the um, length that you would want to put it around. And then this, how, this is how it goes. Instead of adding a bead and an and a knot over here, knot and you know melting that, we can do this. Let me just do it one more time here, very slowly, with um, this one. So. This is my naughty do doll. I can do it only with the naughty do doll. This is the, uh, but you can also do um, it with you know just a regular. I will show you guys that way too. But here is the clip, alligator clip, and here is a rod. This comes with the naughty do doll, by the way. All of these, even this needle, comes with it. I'm not being sponsored or anything by naughty do doll, but I'm just letting you guys know. So here I see one strand is longer and one strand is short. So I need to be, um, I should do this short one first. But unfortunately I don't have enough cord to do the barrel knot here. Um, because what happens is, um, I'll show you guys one more time how to do it. But um, um, the thing is, this is a short necklace and I need as much as it to go back so that I can put it around the neck. I mean, yeah, put it on top of my head. So that's unfortunate. Wish I had it. But I'll show you guys with the longer cord for sure. But the, with the shorter cord, what I'm thinking is... Um, Okay, I have four, four beads, four beads. So if I'm using these two as well, maybe use the petal itself, right? With the petal I can open, that's good. I'm just gonna do the petal at the end. Why not, right? And then tie in over here, not just like so. 
So this is an easy way. Okay. And then you snip this off and you melt it and push it. So that's your stopper. Okay. That's a simple one that you can do, which I'm going to do here too. But I'll show you guys the um, barrel knot as well first. So. So we have these specs and I just set it up here and this needle here. Take your cord, okay, secure it with the alligator clip. Go around the rod, okay, this rod, go around it. Take your needle. So I want the knot to come at the end, right? So I wrap it from the end and go towards inside. So I keep this uh, needle on top of it this parallel to the cord and I wrap it see this I go around the rod keep this on top and then I wrap it I go from under over under over under over you can do as many wraps as you want as big the knot will be okay under over and then take this end cord and put it through the needle just like that okay through the loop of the needle and pull the needle off when you pull it the cord that you put inside the loop will also come out and then when you do um, tighten this knot this is how the knot will come out and it gets tightened see that that's the number of wraps that you made and it'll come beautifully like a knot a barrel knot so if you don't have this um, knotty to at all, you don't have to have it for the barrel knot. <coughs> Let me show you guys that method as well. All you need is a, like, a, you know, I prefer this needle, yarn needle. That's very helpful. If you don't have this yarn needle, you can use a straw and do the same. Okay. That's, that's anything you can take anything around the house like you know something that you have available in your stash will do for it is what i said as long as it's a hollow rod like a tube or something that can be used but it needs to be stiffer so this is this and if i have this if i want the knot at the end i start here and then i just wrap 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 okay and then put this end cord through this uh, needle loop okay and then take it through so see I missed it so let's see see once you what you need to be careful is see that I crisscross here just once and then I go like this and I do the wrap consistently right next to each other and then I just put it through this needle okay and then pull that needle through all the loops see the end comes through and then you can go ahead and tighten that knot I'm guiding the wraps right next to each other so that it looks nice and pretty so that's if i tighten it that's how our knot will come off and let me show you guys one more time i will zoom in a bit this time so that you can see much secure knot this is so it's a very good one to learn i know it it was intimidating for me at the start when i was learning this it was a little bit difficult for me and it used to like 
hit or miss you know it used to come sometimes it used to not come sometimes but i would say practice makes everything perfect so if you keep on practicing you will get to it just that you need to understand what why and how and this thing is like very simple um for the people who does it but it is very difficult for the people who it's new for them take the core okay wrap it around once and twice like see this and then twice and then go around hold on Let me show you guys this one okay so you take your cord whichever cord you are going to knot with that needs to be in the top so place your loop or needle here take it and criss cross once and then go ahead and wrap it see we are wrapping from this side to the sorry it might not be clear so take this okay so just wrap it the first criss cross needs to be there okay and then you go from left to right let me show you take this this has to come from the top just go on top okay cross and then go like that and put this through this if this is long it's easier to knot and just pull that see this this is through the loop if when you pull this pull this the cord will come and then there will be your knot see how i roll it so that i'm guiding the loops to be right next to each other so that's how the knot is actually but if you have a straw it's a different thing i will link down the description box below if you guys want to watch that video that i use a straw or you know a metal a hollow cylindrical object to actually do this knot I don't know where I put my straw I used to always have this here might have misplaced it but since I learned this technique um, with the knotty do it all for me it was simple and easy so I didn't uh, need the straw anymore but I used to do that for so many years even though I owned a knotty do it all at that point of time I didn't realize that I could do this knot like this with that so that was um, that was a new technique for me so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add the petal at the end just like we did on the other side as I said, you can do it as simple as this. Doesn't have to be very fancy. So, take wrap it around your finger. Take the cord underneath. So you want put your pliers inside. You want the knot to be exactly where you have the other knot, right? So you can put one of the and move the knot that is approximately equal right perfect now all you need to do is snip off this excess take your lighter and melt that end and press it against so here we go. Also out a little bit. So this is our 
inner necklace okay this is our outer necklace this is our choker this is the long necklace and if the back looking at the back this is how you will have it and this is how the ends will look I really like the way this turned out to be I hope you guys like it too if you do give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel don't forget to hit the bell icon for notification I do upload videos couple of times a week. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Don't forget to check out ggctreasures.com.